Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is probability distributions. I cover this in lesson 3.1 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. You can check the video description for more information about that. Now, this lecture here is really going to be introducing what we're going to be doing over the course of this unit and relate it briefly to how probability distributions matter for what we're attempting to accomplish here. So recall back to the first unit when we were dealing with strategic form games. Again, this unit is going to be talking about advanced strategic form games, so we're going to be looking at essentially what we've seen in the past, but in a much more difficult and in a much more complicated, but ultimately in a much more rewarding way. So remember, this was the battle of the sexes. We know that there are two pure strategy Nash equilibria. There's the ballet-ballet equilibrium and the fight-fight equilibrium. And then there's also a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium where the players go to their more preferred form of entertainment with probability two-thirds and their less preferred form of entertainment with probability one third. So we've already calculated those equilibria in the past, but what if I were to change the Battle of the Sexes game in a very minute way? What if I were to turn these twos into fours just like that? That doesn't change the ranked ordering of the player's outcomes. For example, the man still wants to go to the fight the most along with player two, and then he most wants to go to the ballet with player two, and his least preferred outcome is still having this coordination failure where he's at the ballet and she's at the fight or vice versa. So by changing those twos to the fours, we haven't changed the pure strategy in Ash Equilibria. Ballet, ballet is still in equilibrium. Fight, fight is still in equilibrium. But we will change the probability distributions that actually form the mixed strategy in Ash Equilibrium. So if I gave you the solution to this game, you couldn't just tell me that the pure strategy, or rather the mixed strategy in Ash Equilibrium is to go to your more preferred form of entertainment with probability two-thirds and go to your lesser preferred form of entertainment with probability one-third. That's not going to carry over to this situation. Likewise, I can make another minor change to this game, move the ones to threes, and that's not going to change the pure strategy Nash equilibria, but it will change the calculation for the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So even if you'd solve the second game, that doesn't get you anywhere when you try to solve the third game. And again, I can make another slight modification, this time changing the zeros to ones, and you're in the same situation as you were before. Even if you've solved the first three versions of this game, you still have to solve that mixed strategy Nash equilibrium again in this fourth game. And so that can be really frustrating if I'm giving you a lot of different versions of Battle, uh, Battle of the Sexes and you keep having to redo the math on the mixed strategy algorithm every single time. So it would be really neat and really convenient if instead of solving games with numbers, we could solve them with variables like this, where we're representing A as the most preferred outcome, B is the second most preferred outcome, and C is the least preferred outcome. And if we could solve the games in this generalized form, then we could then sp specifically plug in the numbers for, say, this fourth example, and turn these A's into 4's, the B's into 3's, and the C's into 1's, and then solve for the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium by just plugging those letters into a fixed formula that we've already come up with. So that's our ultimate goal, and that's something that we're going to start looking at in the next video. And after that, we'll expand to looking at how the games change as the values of these parameters change, which is going to be a really interesting thing. And that's something that we'll be looking forward to even later in this this uh, unit. But for now, it's important to actually have a firmer grasp of what a probability distribution is, because we've been dealing with them implicitly all along when we've been looking at mixed strategy Nash equilibria. And it's important to actually understand what's going to be going on with those when we switch over to the more complicated world, where we're looking at letters and in the form of variables instead of specific numbers. So a strategy, when we're talking about what we're actually going to be playing in the game, is a probability distribution. Sometimes it's a trivial probability distribution. So if player one is playing ballet as a pure strategy, that's still a probability distribution. His probability distribution in the form of a strategy is to play ballet with probability one, or in other words, play ballet 100% of the time, and to play fight 0% of the time. So those are trivial examples of what a probability distribution looks like in the form of a strategy. But then again, we have the more intuitive and more interesting versions where we're actually mixing where in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of the original ballot battle of the sexes game i was going to choose to go to the fight with probability two-thirds and the ballet with probability one-third when i was the man as player one in that original game so we know that that sounds like a probability distribution because I can choose to play something two-thirds of the time. I can also choose to play something one-third of the time, and that tells me exactly what I'm going to be doing every single time. That's adding up to 100% of the time. 
And that all makes sense, but what happens if instead of giving you a probability that looks like one third, I instead gave you a probability that looked like b minus c divided by a plus b minus 2c? It's a lot more complicated and it's a lot less easy to just look at that and be like, oh yes, that's a valid probability distribution. So what we're going to have to do eventually is test whether things are valid probability distributions or not. And what I mean by things there, I mean complicated expressions with letters instead of numbers. And so when we're going to be doing that, we need to actually have some sort of framework to go back to to understand whether something is a valid probability distribution or not. And so I'm going to now give you the golden rules of probability distribution. So there are just two things that you need to keep in mind whenever you're looking at a probability distribution. And I'll talk about some of the implications of these two rules in a moment. The first rule is that for n events, the probability of landing on any given one, so event 1, x1, or event 2, x2, or event x3, or and so forth until you get to xn, the probability of those is the probability of x1 plus x2 plus x3 and so forth, and those all have to sum up to 1 or 100% of the time. So what we're saying here is the events in this particular case when we're applying probability theory directly to game theory, when we're talking about events, we are referring to the probability that I actually play a particular strategy when I'm mixing. So an event may be play ballet, or it could be play fight. And in this case, when we're only looking at a two strategy game, that's only the, the only two options that I have. I can only go to the ballet or I can only go to the fight. Those are the only two things that can actually result of my probability choice or my probabilistic choice when I'm randomizing in equilibrium. But you'll notice that two thirds and one third add up to 100%. So that's pretty good and that's pretty easy. And then the second thing is that all events in my probabil probability distribution must be between zero and one. So what that means, it means two things. It means that no event can occur with negative probability. I can't, for example, go to the fight 100% of the time and then go to the ballet negative 10% of the time. So that violates the, the rule that I'm choosing something with a negative probability when I said I was going to go to the ballet negative 10% of the time. It also violates the idea that all of these probabilities have to add up to one because 100% plus negative 10% adds up to 90%, so that wouldn't work for that reason as well. But I also couldn't have a situation where I'm going to the fight 100%, or rather 110% of the time, and I'm going to the ballet negative 10% of the time. So that fails for a lot of reasons, because, well, you can't have a probability occur with probability greater than 1 or greater than 100%. So if you ever had a sports coach who told you to give you 110% in today's game, well, you can just ignore them as being ridiculous. The most you can possibly give is 100%. So the fact that I'm going to the fight 110% of the time is in complete violation with this. But it's also the case that I'm also violating the rule that we have a negative probability here. And I said I was going to the ballet negative 10% of the time. That also won't work, even though these two things do add up to 100%. Because I had 110% and I had negative 10%. Those do add up to just 100%. But it doesn't work here because we have a negative probability and a probability greater than one in those individual events. Now, the last thing to note is that if you ever see a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium that violates those rules, then the alleged mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is not actually a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And whenever we're solving for a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, we need to actually explicitly write that out in terms of these complicated expressions like b minus c divided by a plus b minus 2c. We actually should write those things out and then we should show, we should demonstrate that our probabilities are in fact all adding up to one and we don't have any negative probabilities and we don't have any positive probabilities. If we can show all of those things and we do in fact have a valid Nash equilibrium and we can run with it and we can write that down as our solution and we can be done and moreover when we're looking at various different versions of the battle of the sexes we can just use this generalized game to solve all of them instantly rather than having to solve each of them individually. So that's the idea with probability distributions, and we'll actually start applying that when we solve for this generalized form of battle of the sexes in the next video. I hope to see you then. Take care.